So joining me today is a consultant with nearly 30 years of business and engineering experience. He is the founder of PCH Business Consultants based in Swindon, but working with his team of associates with overwhelmed business owners with multi-million pound businesses across the UK. Welcome, Paul. Thank you for coming in to join me today. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. It's okay. been a pleasure to come and uh, have a look around the studio and uh, see what uh, Tom's been doing and uh, have a look around. Indeed. So, well, welcome to our In Conversation piece. And I'm going to start by being a little bit controversial, if I may. On LinkedIn and networking groups, I come across a lot of business consultants and business coaches. What makes what you do any different? What makes you special? It's a question you get asked a lot. and. It depends for each person that we're working with. Coaches tend to work on the principle that you already have the answer in there somewhere. And they will ask you questions and support you and nudge you forward and take you at your own pace. What I tend to do is come rely on that sort of, um, that almost say 30 years of experience in terms of actually getting things done. Actually taking, getting a grip of the business, helping sort of set the goals set the steps, give structure and process to what the outcome is. So it's about a blend of a little bit of coaching, a little bit of mentoring, but an awful lot of the consultancy side of things of actually let's get stuff done. And it's that ability to sort of really sort of grasp and understand the business, get inside the business, not just sit and ask questions. And that's, there's a subtle difference there. So how do you do that? If a business owner's coming to you and they, need, they know they need help, but they just don't know where to start. You said you'd make a plan and you work with them to set those goals, but how does that first meeting unfold? Where does that start? How do you dive into a business? It's just a conversation. And it, it, that's one of the things I found is we just start asking questions about the business. What does the business do? What did you hope the business would deliver you? Why are you involved in this? What do you enjoy? What's starting to become uncomfortable? Where are the challenges? Where are the pain points? What are the things you want to start to sort of change? And it's starting to really understand sort of at the heart of the business what's going wrong. Um, I found because I've worked in so many different um, areas, I've worked with so many different businesses, uh, particularly through the pandemic, I've worked with nearly 500 businesses um, on a sort of one to one basis with the various sort of um, local authorities. Just the insight into so many different instances, um, environments, industries, challenges and problems that I can relate to almost everything. And having done so many things across the career, it means that you can quickly get a sort of that rapport in terms of actually let's let's ignore what you want from the business point of view. Right, this is what's going on here. And we, we always get straight into the this is going wrong. We can change this and we can tweak this. And once you sort of built that little bit of rapport that the person starts to believe you understand their company and the challenges they're facing, suddenly you can have a very different conversation. Whereas before it's very protective, it's kind of like, I'm proud of what I've created, but I know it's not working very well. And I don't really want to admit it's not. Once you get past that and start to understand the, the fundamentals of the, the business and then start to reassure somebody that actually the problems they're facing are not new. There's nothing fundamentally that they've done that's making this go wrong. It's just that natural evolution of a business to the point where it gets bigger. It grows beyond a single person's capability to, to control it and run it the same way they've always done. Mm -hmm. And that's the point where you need support and guidance. Um, yeah. And to try and just work hard doesn't work. And just once, once you just get that report and have that conversation, that's when sort of you remove that, those barriers to, right, let's just have an honest conversation. What, what is it you want? You've just hit on something that I hear a lot of time in my work as well, because I've always done it that way. Yes. It's a trap I think a lot of businesses fall under. If it's working, they keep doing it the same way, but obviously in order to grow, sometimes things need to change. But a lot of businesses find change difficult. Do people ever resist some of the changes that you suggest or try and implement with them or don't believe that a different way is gonna work or always try and fall back to their, we've always done this ways of working before? All the time. Um, and I learnt fairly early on when I sort of set up the, um, the consultancy, we will only work with those people who would who want to embrace that change. Okay. Trying to convince somebody that they need to change or that there is potential to improve their company when they're not ready and not willing to embrace that is virtually impossible. So have you walked away from businesses that have not wanted Often, to change? Often, because we can have, have that conversation 
Um, I have one company that I talk to every quarter at a particular networking event. And for the last three years has been sort of uh, telling me how the business has been sort of struggling. Um, we've worked out how much profit he's leaving on the table, what, what it would cost. And the response is, that sounds like hard work. And so does, we could probably save them two or three hundred thousand pounds in profit a year. And they still won't engage because um, they're not, not ready. So it has to be the owner has either got to the point where there are no other alternatives or they understand the benefit and the improvements that something external can bring, that objective, the experience. Um, so yeah, there is that resistance. But there's also that I've tried everything. I work all the hours under the sun. I've tried absolutely everything in my business to make a difference. What makes you think that you're going to find something that I haven't tried? Um, what makes you so clever? Um, and part of that is just getting the owner to pause just for five minutes and say, okay, there's a couple of things that I can see from the outside that you're doing that you don't have to. Let me help you find a way to do that. Um, we might bring a virtual assistant for a couple of hours and give me those two hours. Then we can start to look at a few things we can change, which will just start to give you a little bit more time back, a few hours here, um, a little bit of clarity of thought processes we start to build into your week. And those little things start to accelerate, but it's just that, that first chink, something. Um, and time and time again, um, I have a conversation a couple of weeks later saying, I couldn't see how you could possibly make any changes to what we did, but somehow you've seen things that we didn't see. And we were utterly convinced that, that this was going to be sort of a, uh, a road to nowhere. But yet you've spotted things, you've changed a few things. Um, and that's just made all the difference. Suddenly I've got some time to think and suddenly I can see and embrace the process you're bringing. Yeah. Whereas before it just seemed um, mythical almost. So as business owners start to work with you and they see these changes, does that sort of give them a hunger to do more, trust more, take more risks maybe because they're seeing that when they did take that leap of faith and trust you with those maybe two hours for a virtual assistant, that actually we can do more of this and they get the sort of desire and the hunger back in their business? Well, I'm going to throw that question back at you. Okay. Because obviously we work together um, on your business, yep, Pinker Solutions. Did. And how was it for you when we started to look at how we could change your business. How did it work from your perspective? Okay, so that puts me in the different position, doesn't it? So yeah, it, it made a big difference because you start getting that belief in yourself and if something works, then yeah, I did see that small changes could lead to bigger changes. Uh, getting more time back was certainly valuable. Um, and certainly one thing that you got me to do was to write a list of everything I wanted to do and then just focus on is it the top three or the top five to get them done. And that focused the mind and yeah, made some changes. Yeah, it's, it's part of that process of setting outcomes. What do you want to achieve? Most people with their business just work hard. Yeah. And we'll work hard on everything, spin every plate and hope that things move forward. We get enough customers, we get enough um, interest to grow the business. What we do very much around is the what does the outcome look like? On that day of success, what does the business need to look like to give you everything you've dreamed of getting? And then work backwards and saying, let's focus on all the things that make that happen yeah. and start to ignore the things on one side. Yeah, um, yeah I realised very quickly I was busy working hard, but not maybe working smart. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the outcomes of where I saw the business in, what was it, five years when we spoke a couple of years ago was very different from where it would have been had I carried on doing exactly the same thing day in, day out that I was doing. And sometimes even that process is enough to make somebody realise that what they're doing is no longer what they want to be doing longer term. And that sort of adapting and it's that stopping, pausing, time to reflect is the most powerful thing in a business. And, and it's something we, we build into the, um, the working week with a client is the time to stop no phone calls, no interruptions. Just talk about how can we make the business better? Because that's when the ideas come, particularly if you've got a team of people you can sort of bounce ideas off each other. Um, that's the most powerful. And I think when working with someone like yourself, you give yourself permission to do that. Whereas when you're working on your own, it feels like you're wasting time. If you take two hours out 
turn everything off and try and work on the business, you always think, oh, there's a pile of emails I should be replying to, or there's some proposals I've got to get out. So I think the benefit, I guess, of working with you is that it gives you that permission to not yes. worry that you should be doing something else and to actually take that time back. But also, when we went through looking at numbers, looking at sort of the capacities, looking at how much you can fit in, that logical, how far can this business go if it's just me? And you start to sort of realise there are limitations. And to, for most people, for most companies, to, to go to the scale that most people imagine that level of success, you have to get out of your own way. You have to be the point where you are not the one running the business. Because if you are, there's a limit to how far you can take it before you become the roadblock. And designing the business to run without you at a point in the future means you have to have the systems, the processes, the people, all the things that sort of build to that. But suddenly that feels like it's, oh, it was just me and I'm quite comfortable just being me. Now it's a company, it's a possible organisation, and that's scary. Yeah. But then we start to build that and make it real. And I often joke, it's like being taken to a clothing shop in a style that you've never worn before and somebody handing you a jacket and you push it on and you kind of go, I'm not sure I feel comfortable in this. And you have to walk in that for a little while to get used to it and go, actually, I quite like this. And that's what we're kind of doing with this is, what does your company need to look like at that point of success? And that looks scary for most people. Mm -hmm. But once you start talking about the fact that you might be about to run a million pound business within two or three years, and you get used to talking about the fact you will run a million pound business, eventually it starts to feel real. We populate it, we design it, and it doesn't feel quite scary anymore. Whereas you're sat here, um, with a small business, you think that just looks like a mountain I'm never going to be able to climb. Whereas what we did with you was to really look at the stepping stones saying, this is what you want, what do we have to do to get you there? And it seemed to start looking manageable. The, this, each step started to look achievable. Yeah. And it's that belief that there's a roadmap um, to get to that point, which was, was the sort of the strength and hopefully the, the thing that's the reassurance for um, clients. Definitely. I mean, it's the bite-sized steps that make a difference. You know, when you see, you, it's like running a marathon. Uh, I use a lot of analogies when I do my training. If you know you've got to run a marathon, you don't go out on day one and run a marathon. You start by doing a couple of K and then you build that up. Then you'll do maybe a, a 5, 10K, a 10K run, then a half marathon. You're not going to achieve that marathon if you set out to do that on day one. So it's very similar, I guess, to breaking it down like that into bite-sized pieces. Yes, but it's the right bite-sized pieces. So how can you help with your clients that come to fruition? Because if I sat down and suddenly needed to employ two members of staff, there's all of the contracts, there's the legalities of doing that. And that's where I think some people, it's a new area, you know, I'm an expert in what I do, I'm not an HR expert. How do you make that happen? How do you help them grow their businesses, whether it be HR or whether it be getting new technology involved in it as well? One of the games we sort of like to play is very much around the, if I said that by a certain date and time, something must happen, suddenly you go into not can I, suddenly it's right, right, now what do I need to do to make it happen? And it just changes the way your brain starts to look at it and saying, right, so I need two people employed in my business, which means I need processes, I need procedures, I need to be able to train them. I need to be able to leave the business and leave them in charge sometimes. So um, how do I ensure they're going to deliver? So um, where's the QC process, the quality control, to make sure they're delivering the right thing? Where's my quality assurance process that stops them doing the wrong thing in the first place? How do I design it so that they can't get it wrong? Um, I need to have two people in place, so I need an HR system in place. So I need um, training, I need discipline, I need expectations, I need job specs. Um, I need to know what aptitude I want my, the people I'm hiring to deliver in, in role. And suddenly all these things cascade from the, I want somebody in post on that day here are all the things that now have to be in place. And some of those things will be new to some people. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the business that I work with tend to be well-established, 15, 20, 25, 30 okay. people. Um, so that's not normally a major issue. But I do work quite a lot with some relatively small companies mm -hmm. where we are transitioning very quickly. They've got a great idea, we're taking the idea to market. Or it's a service that needs to stop just being about the owner. And that first step of employing somebody is, is very scary. Yeah. Um, and most people just assume that they can't afford it. But much the same as um, when you set up, everyone says outsource, outsource, outsource. 
and you sort of look at the budget and say, I can't afford to, but I can do those things. And when you quickly realise that somebody outsourcing it, yes, may appear expensive, but actually they can do it twice as well as you can in half the time. Yeah. And it makes all the difference. It's that thing that suddenly start to trust other people. Have people work in your business because your greatest value to the business as the business owner is outside the walls. It's the seeing the risks, seeing the opportunities, going and negotiating those deals, those contracts, um, talking to your suppliers. That's where you need to be as a business owner because the stuff that happens day to day, you can write that down as a process. People can do that without you having to do it. But that's not the clever bit. The clever bit is what's in your head as the owner. Um, and it's giving yourself permission to step outside the company and enjoy that because you're the most passionate, the most engaged about what you do. Um, I'm working with a client at the moment in Worcester, um, Ian, who's the uh, managing director um, for a company called Stilo Touch, and design studio, amazing presentation tool, was working flat out to stand still, helping him redesign the business so that he now sits almost outside the data activity so that he can be the front to engage with large businesses. Um, we set him a target, his five-year plan, we smashed in less than two years. Um, we are, his four-year-old book at the moment is quadruple where the business was when we started. And it's all because he's now in that space where he's not encumbered by the day-to-day -day processes. Mm -hmm. He's able to go out and genuinely talk to multi-billion pound organizations. Whereas 18 months ago, he was literally him and one other person in his very nice office in the garden. And that contrast, that belief, because he can now step into that space and just enjoy it. Be the face of the business. Be passionate about the product, how to use it. And it's just giving him a completely different sort of uh, perspective on what running his business looks like. Um, and he's had to learn to trust the team. But we found some exceptional people mm -hmm. to step in. But we were really clear about what their roles were. So he was confident. He knew that somebody coming into that role would do what he needed. So he didn't have to do it. And yes, there's been a little bit of um, transitioning of, okay, I, I need to learn to trust. Yeah. But once he got past that, he thrived. And, it, and now we are almost having to say, right, well, how far do we stop this now? Because the, the, the transition is just enormous. Um, part of the process that we kind of work around and some of the stuff we were starting to sort of talk about with, with your business. I work, I've got about 30 associates who work under brand and they're all specialists who bring elements of the business together into a structure. And what we've typically found is, once we've designed the business for that day of success, we work out all the things that are missing today that would need to be in place, and then each associate come and brings their element to it. What we do is we build a business today that has more of the elements that work, that help your business work. And what we actually find is we can accelerate the growth faster than we planned because suddenly you've got everything working and you are free to accelerate your business. And if you as the business owner have that clarity of thought and the time to breathe and think, your business will accelerate much, much faster than when you are flat out and busy and you haven't got time to make the right decisions because you will make tactical short-term decisions that won't move you forward. And that's the key, isn't it? It's having time to make yeah. those decisions and obviously working with your associates, I guess you could, without, what, 30 of them, you've got a specialist in every... Pretty much, Every area. and we have partners that um, if we don't have something covered, we, we, amongst us we're up, we've worked with enough people, we'll find the right people. Um, and, and that's part of the, 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 the mechanism here is it's, we're all people who work close together. We trust each other, we all have that client first mentality. Mm -hmm. It's part of the reason I've chosen the associates I have, is that they all want to go the extra mile for the client. It's, it's never money first, it's always client first. Um, so it feels comfortable. Yeah. Um, I trust them, they trust me, and then the client comes to trust that actually the relationship is it's quite a relaxed one. And it started to work quite well. It's, it's a relatively new sort of process where um, I'd be calling them in to do bits. And me learning to step back and say, actually, I don't have to do everything, <laughs> is me starting to follow my own process. Cause, yeah. um, We're always good. the worst at we following are the our worst own rules. Indeed, yes. So once the business has made these growths, made these changes, how do people step back? I mean, I would imagine that would be a very difficult thing for a business owner to do. For me, if I'd grown my business and you'd been with me every step of the way on that journey, 
it's like letting go of those apron strings again, isn't it? When you've had that confident with you, that trusted person, the person that's sort of validating and backing up those plans that you're making. How do people transition at the end? Because I'm sure there must be an end at some point or do people continue working with you forever? It, it, it changes the relationship. Um, I come from a very operational background, so my challenge is not getting too deep inside the actual business, running the business. But inevitably, we start off by actually helping to support the operation day to day. And slowly, as the owner gets more confident and starts to be able to step back, trust the team, um, we fix some of the major sort of bugbears in the company. Mm -hmm. It might be an HR problem, it may be that there's a quality system problem, or um, there's a fundamental issue with one of the suppliers. We start to under unpick where the key stress points are, fix those things. Suddenly, there's some breathing space. That breathing space means that the level of support that person needs is more about supporting that strategic thinking. So it's less doing, it's less fixing. It's more, okay, I'm going to start asking you some the sort of questions a board or a steering team might ask you. Um, how are you going to achieve your next business goal? What is the next business goal? Are you on track with that? What's your strategy? Um, have you looked at multiple ways of sort of delivering that outcome? Which one's the best? Um, why are you choosing that project over this project? What's the return on the investment? Have you thought about it? Those challenging questions, okay. it's, it's much more mentoring and guidance than it is hand-holding. But, but it is confidence. Yeah. There's a point where somebody doesn't need their hand held quite so tightly. What they need at that point is stretching and the, the guidance around what should I be thinking about. Where do I focus? Yeah. So it sort of evolves over it time. Does, yeah. You know, they're going to need you and need to work more closely with you in the early days, and then it transitions and you step back. So, yes. so one of my clients, um, I'm currently acting as their strategic director. So I sit in um, with key clients, bolstering the team, asking slightly more strategic, challenging okay. questions, um, and that's that can be the level we get to. I'm not involved in the day to day, but I just add the value where I need to. Um, See, I get quite emotionally involved in the business as well. It's quite hard for me sometimes to, for me to step back from that because I want the business to be successful. I feel part of the team and part of the process. Yeah. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, it's hard for yeah. me to then have to sort of make sure I don't get too embedded in that. But I guess that going back to probably my first question, that's probably one of the benefits and differences working with you is that you can do that closeness at the beginning, but you can take them right through to that strategical guidance on the board at the other end of the process. It's not just to go in and fix the problem that they've got today. It's yes. long term. It can be even longer term for the length of the business and the lifespan of the business. Absolutely. Um, one of the clients I'm working with at the moment, we've done everything from look at their product mix, look at the way they operate, changing the, the direction of um, being a very project, very tech focused company, um, recognizing that actually they can resell the, um, the ideas in other forms to other customers. And you start getting into, into IP and the sort of protection around sort of um, who owns the designs, that kind of thing. We start to look at the, the way the management structure is set up, how the people are managed, uh, what are their roles and responsibilities? Are they clear? Is the business clear about what they want the team to be doing? Have they, do they understand who they've got within the team? What capabilities have they got? What skills have they got in there? So it's the whole process of understanding have we got the right sort of mix, the right setup? Um, heavily involved then in sort of the, how the finances work, the funding, the revenue streams. We start to look at um, investment opportunities. We start to look at steering team and the sort of how does the, the management team process work. Um, we put lots of work into separating operational level, management level and strategic level conversations. We have clear agendas. We, do, we don't have that typical blurring where we've all turned up to that meeting three hours later. We've all talked around every part of the business. Nothing's been achieved. Nothing's been agreed. Okay. And I, I talk about this at various sort of presentations I've done. And you see the whole, everything's sort of going, yeah, we've all been in that meeting and we're like that yesterday. Yeah. But just start to get some clarity around the decision making. And suddenly, with an accountability process, because I think it's great having the, the desire for the outcome, designing the outcome, putting the building blocks and putting the plan together. But most people are so busy that without the accountability bit, which is the, right, which bits are you going to do first? Are you going to have that done? When are you going to have it done by? And I'm going to come and check. Is the bit that starts that slow momentum of actually getting it done. Yeah. 
Um, and we always start with the thing that's going to have the most impact because that will have the most potential to change. That once those things start to happen, start to see a little bit of daylight. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, I um, had um, a note from one of my clients this morning and um, she's a chiropractor who is very, very busy um, in the process mentioned the fact that she does um, race horses and to go from um, being flat out over delivering under charging 60 70 hours a week with people to recognizing that actually if she did one or two days a week doing grade one race horses it would more than compensate she could actually do a day's clinic for free for the clients that she was sort of she thought she was helping um, we're two months in and all we've done is starting to look at a few things we can tweak in the business. And her comment this morning is that it's just two months in, I can't believe how much confidence it's given her, um, belief that she can actually have this business that will deliver what she wants, um, a clarity to start seeing the things that will be most profitable, do less of the stuff that is least profitable. Um, but just the few little things we've changed are already dramatically changing um, her breathing space, time to think about the business and even making time for the process of growing the business is time away from doing to stop discuss and think why what do I really want how does this really work um, now I can relate to that I mean having you question my business fresh pair of eyes why was I doing stuff you do look at it differently and then you start looking at yourself and go yeah why am I doing this what could I do differently what do I want to do what do I enjoy doing so completely understanding get that yeah. I often sort of joke, there is no magic to this. Um, I did lots of one-to-one -one sessions where in that one hour, never met the company, had to get inside, understand the business, befriend, engage, see something in the business where we can actually make a difference and send that person out the room with their head spinning with ideas and thoughts. And people go, that's been amazing, it's been magic. So no, it's just perspective. Seeing a company from a different angle with a wealth of experience to know that actually there's nothing that you are doing that is unique. I will have seen a solution somewhere else. Even if it's not identical, yeah. we can see things. But instantly seeing the one or two things that you're doing that you probably didn't even realize you were doing, that just tweak that and do that over there would just transform the business. And that looks like a wow moment. And that's lovely to see it, um, but that's that, that's that thinking differently. Okay. It, it sounds trite, it sounds cliche, but that thinking differently is that stop let me show you there is a different way to think about your business. And as you saw when you went through this, it's, wow, I've never seen it that way before. I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think I could do that. Yeah, um, yeah it's fun. So the million dollar question then on this one, how do people work with you? How can they get in touch with you? What do they need to do? They need to be a certain size business, they need to be hitting certain revenues. Do you offer packages? Where can they go forward from today? It is almost unique to every company, every client. It needs to be somebody who understands the value that somebody external can bring to the business. Now, that's never inexpensive, so it has to be you have to be at the point where you are confident that the business can grow and you believe in the process, because it will pay dividends. And, and um, it can be, so the example we're working with at the moment, it's a tenfold return investment over sort of a two or three year period. But it is, you are committing to um, a process that typically we talk about, start to make some change within three months, start to get control back within six, um, fully implement changes within 12 months and then finally start to get you to the point where you are enjoying your business somewhere between 12 and 18 months. So you are, it's a long haul process and knowing up front that that's what you're sort of signing up to. Um, it's not done to you, it's not done for you. So you have to recognise that guide I will support, the team will support, but ultimately you will be the one doing the work. So if that short first period of time will help you take some of the things off your shoulders that you shouldn't be doing, but there will be an increase in workload to start off with, just to start to embed the right things. Mm -hmm. um, typically, working with a business owner or senior leadership team with an organization where 
the team itself or the owner has become the roadblock. And that's no disrespect to anybody who's grown their own business. Um, and most business owners are fiercely proud about the fact they've, they've built this sort of multi-million pound business, three, four, five million pounds. Um, but they design the business where they touch every part of it so that they're in control of it, they've designed it, they've structured it. But there is a point where suddenly there are too many plates to keep spinning. And if you have to be the one that spins every plate, at some point you'll drop one. If you haven't designed it such that other people can spin those plates for you, you won't have time when you are that busy to do that. And that's when I get sort of the phone calls from people who are so immersed in just keeping it alive, just keeping it ticking over. Um, growth can't happen because you can't improve capacity and capability. You can't go out and fight for more customers because you're so busy just making mm. the status quo happen. Um, so it's recognising that you are becoming overwhelmed. You are spending 20, 30 hours a day uh, week, sorry, um, just running the um, the business. You're not making advances. You're just holding it together. Yeah. Um, you're working late every night. Don't see the family at weekends. If you are in that position, that's your company. Now's the time to stop and say, actually, is there a way to sort of move forward? And what's the best way for people to contact you if they want to move forward, if they're ready for that change? Um, either find me on the website, which is uh, www.pch-consultants.co.uk or paul at pch-consultants.co.uk or give me a ring on 0771 500 8521. Perfect. I'll happily have a conversation free of charge with anybody who wants to have a look at their business and decide how we'll structure a package and a process for your company. And for people obviously ready to embrace that change. A photo phone call. Yeah. So thank you to Paul for coming in today and sharing his business strategy with us and how he works with his clients. So don't forget to tune in next time to see who else is in conversation with me here in the Solo 16 studio.